going on everyone and welcome back to another video. So this is the 2021 iPad Pro. It's coming with some refreshed internals, mainly in the form of Apple's M1 chip. And it's also coming rocking some new accessories like this super dope white Magic Keyboard. Now since it is rocking Apple's latest silicon, that means it's a performance monster. But at the end of the day, this is still an iPad Pro. So let's talk about what's new and ultimately how that M1 chip changes the iPad Pro experience. Let's do this, I'm excited. The interesting part about the iPad Pro line is that you would technically be incorrect if you were to say that the M1 is the first time that Apple put custom made silicon into the iPad Pros. They've always come running their own custom version of Apple silicon. For example, the last two iPad Pros that we had came running the A12X and the A12Z processors respectively. And those were actually really, really good processors. On the previous iPad Pros, we never had any issues in terms of performance. And if I remember correctly, when we reviewed last year's iPad Pro, I said that that iPad was already too powerful for the software that it was running. Now in terms of performance differences between the A12X and the A12Z, they were there, but they were minimal gains. Now the difference between the A12Z and the M1 is like in a league of its own. So to give you one example in terms of just a benchmark, which is you know a performance standard that a lot of us like to rely on, the A12Z iPad Pro had a multi-core score, if I remember correctly, in the mid 4000s, like 4400, 4500. This M1 iPad Pro has a multi-core score breaking 7000 in a lot of cases. I mean, that's close to like a 50% jump in CPU performance. That's absolutely wild, considering the last time we saw a processor bump from the X to Z, it was a marginal increase in CPU performance. So the M1 takes the performance of the iPad Pro to just a completely different planet. It's, it's out of this world, no pun intended. Benchmark numbers aside, that raw performance capability does actually translate really well into real world application usage. So if you're the type of user who's going to pick up an iPad Pro for media creation, you're gonna rely on applications like Photoshop, Procreate, GarageBand, Lightroom, those types of really intensive apps that are natively available on iPad OS, they're going to run incredibly, incredibly well. And this is also a rare occasion that we've seen Apple pack a large amount of RAM into either configuration of iPad Pro that you buy. So my specific iPad Pro comes with 256 gigs of storage. Any storage option that's under one terabyte is going to come with eight gigs of RAM. But if you decide to step up to that one terabyte or above storage option, you're gonna come with 16 gigs of RAM. That is a lot and something that we typically haven't seen in any device made by Apple mainly thanks to how optimized their devices are. But surprisingly enough, the iPad Pro also does a great job of holding multiple applications in memory. I mean, it's almost kind of silly, the amount of apps you can just have open now and you can shuffle back and forth between each one and they are actually held in memory. So there's no reloading whenever you open them up. They're just open and ready to go regardless of how long ago you had them open. So benchmark scores, impressive. Real world usage, just as impressive. Now let's talk about display technology because one of the two recently released iPad Pros comes with new display tech. Now the 11 inch model is unfortunately sticking to essentially the same exact display as the previous gen 11 inch, but the 12.9 inch model here got some really, really nice upgrades in the display department. It's coming rocking what Apple is calling the Liquid Retina XDR display with ProMotion, which is essentially Liquid Retina 2.0 with ProMotion, which is essentially a mini LED display with a 120 hertz refresh rate, which is essentially a display that gets incredibly bright, is capable of reproducing really rich and solid black colors, and the contrast is phenomenal, all with a super smooth, buttery refresh rate, which essentially means that it's a fantastic display. Layers, onions, have layers. There are some minor physical differences between the M1 iPad Pro and the A12Z iPad Pro, so we'll go ahead and cover those really quick. 
The new gen iPad Pro is actually slightly thicker and it's also slightly heavier. But chances are you're not gonna notice any of those changes because they're so minor. But at the very least, they are functional. So while this iPad is thicker and heavier, it is housing a slightly larger battery and obviously it's housing that new display technology. So I'm all for it. If you need to make the iPad Pro just slightly thicker and heavier, but you're housing some cool tech upgrades, that's always welcome in my book. Now a couple of other new changes to keep in mind. On the front of the iPad Pro, there is a new ultra wide camera, which let's be honest, you probably shouldn't be taking selfies on an iPad Pro. I would never recommend that, but I do see an ultra wide camera being useful whenever it comes to doing things like FaceTiming your friends and family, especially if you get this keyboard and you can actually keep the iPad Pro propped up at a really nice angle. Just know that with this ultra wide camera comes distortion and the distortion on it is very real. Even with the setting to try to eliminate or at least reduce distortion, there's still very much some distortion going on at those edges. So if you do wanna FaceTime friends and family, just stay away from the edges of the ultra wide camera, okay? Now the USB port has also been upgraded to a Thunderbolt port capable of USB 4 data transfer speeds, which is super, super impressive. Now the rest of the hardware specs on the iPad Pro are gonna be really similar to the last generation. You still have that quad speaker system, which sounds great. You still have those studio quality microphones, which also sound great. And on the back of the iPad, you have two cameras with that LiDAR scanner. All in all though, I am super, super impressed with this iPad Pro. I knew right away whenever Apple announced that they threw the M1 SoC into the iPad Pro, that it was going to be a ridiculous performer because if you've been fortunate enough to try out any of Apple's products to feature the M1, they all have just crazy performance ability. Now, the iPad Pro also does come with some awesome upgrades like that liquid retina XDR display as well. The maximum brightness on it is also phenomenal. So whenever it comes to something like battery life, the battery life on this iPad Pro is around the same, maybe a little worse than the previous generation, but keep in mind, you are throwing a super powerful chip like the M1 in there, and you also have a really, really bright, high quality display thrown into this year's model as well. So I feel like the slight hit in battery life was to be expected. Um, but again, my sentiments about this iPad Pro echo my sentiments of the last generation iPad Pro in that it's so powerful and it's so capable, but it's being held back by it's software, in my opinion at least. Now, with iPad OS 15 coming, I'm really hoping to see the lines between the iPad Pro and the MacBook featuring M1 processors to kind of blur a little bit. This iPad is way too powerful in its current state to be running iPad OS 14, so hopefully iPad OS 15 is going to bring some awesome changes. Now, I feel like Apple internally has to be playing some sort of tug of war though whenever it comes to thinking about implementing something like this because at what point in time does Apple make the iPad Pro so good that it may start to eat into their MacBook sales a little bit, right? So someone like myself, I am actually really attracted to the iPad Pro line as opposed to a full-blown large MacBook Pro because of the portability, the aesthetic of the full build, and I think I see the potential in a product line like this. So I'm hoping with some pretty big software changes, we'll start to see some pretty excellent stuff come to the iPad Pro. Either way, it's a super incredible device. If you're thinking about getting one, I would keep everything we've said about software in mind before you actually take the plunge because it is also super, super expensive. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, make sure you hit like and subscribe down below. Feel free to share with your friends as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.